Let's start here. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 11, New Start. In today's episode, we set out to do a couple things. We realized, based on feedback with different people, including y'all, that it would be helpful to ourselves to further continue clarifying what does it mean to say we compose in multiple dimensions. So one of the things we did is we made a Composing in Multiple Dimensions concept sketch, which looks like this. So one of our dimensions is sound, aural. Another dimension is visual, so aural and visual. But we also have 3D objects that we've been working on in this series in a 3D platform. We also have text concepts, just like the saying text concept is a text concept. Uh, the 3D objects ended up using interactive scripts. And then lately with 3D audio, we have been using multiple feed streams uh, that feed in and create a composite. And as a matter of fact, uh, we made a composite video today. So, and then the other day we made a composite binaural recording by taking four piano, one, two, three, four, and putting one front, left, front, right, back, left, right, right, back right, and then compositing them, multiple feeds into a net output. So along those lines, we did in fact create a video of the binaural recording. And for this one, we have three, three kind of feed streams. take it back we have four because at the bottom left we have the the magic animation where each of the four squares is brightening up based on which piano is playing up at the top we have the muse score video the muse score video is this thing uh, and then we have the midi animation the midi animation is this thing and then there's really fourth streams because the fourth one coming in is down here this audio stream so basically, there's the Muse uh, score, there's the magic uh, animated squares, and the MIDI uh, animated dots, and then uh, playing in the background is the binaural recording that was created in Reaper. So this is an example of what we're starting to call um, feed streams. And, and we're realizing that feed streams is becoming a set it up here somewhere. Feed streams are becoming a major theme in this series. Uh, we also decided to rename our file Free Associate One and not tell people what emotion was on our mind when we wrote it, rather let them have their own interpretation uh, because we've discovered in some feedback that it's intriguingly surprising what different interpretations people come up with. And then so this movie, this composite video is renamed Free Associate One. And then we further developed um, the second one, which we're calling for obvious reasons, Free Associate Two, which you heard a little bit of just a minute ago. So what we're gonna do is uh, play the MIDI animation of Free Associate Two and this uses six derivative scales, whereas Free Associate 1 used four source scales. So four source scales created six derivative scales, and now we have a Free Associate based on those. That sounds like this.
So that concludes today's stream. What we liked about re reminded ourselves that what we like about the MIDI view is that you can really see um, the, the intervals. For example, down here, it's pretty obvious these scales are different. Not only are they in different colors, but uh, and also not only that, they're extreme. There's an extreme jump in there in that scale, and there's an extreme jump in that scale, and there's a less extreme jump in that scale. So we hear that when it goes blink. Um, and then you can hear them reinforcing and almost becoming a metronome. Boom, boom. So, so the MIDI animation view really gives us some insight to the structure of the music. On the other hand, it's a very mm, simplistic, uh, that's supposed to be a piano, quote unquote, there. When you play this, uh, this version of it, down here where the fast parts are, you hear, you hear the richness. However, it's harder to see how different these scales are. These just look like a bunch of ink blots on a on a staff. So the two views, the two dimensional views, give us two kinds of looking, give us uh, a different perspective. So we have the visual image of the music. We have the aural sound of the music. We have two different visual images of it. And then by merging them together in a feed stream, we, we get this kind of a view. Here, this is adding the, the binaural, the stereo effect. Um, and you'd ha when you see the fully rendered video, it's easier to tell which one of these are lighting up. So our ideas for next time are share work to date, absorb the feedback, continue to absorb f feedback, we should say. Continue our ideas and exploring these visual and oral combinations. So thank you for your time, attention, curiosity, and interest. Thank you to Mr. Spatz, our regular returning viewer. Tune in next time. We look forward to seeing you. Take care, and as always, keep on streaming.